Have you been looking to buy a home in Healdsburg but feel the prices have just got too high? So let's talk about whether Windsor is a good alternative to Healdsburg. It's just an 8 minute drive away with access to many of the same amenities and a more affordable price point. So in this video we want to talk about what's it like to live in Windsor compared to Healdsburg and we'll talk about everything from you know the different types of homes, compare the schools, talk about the restaurants and talk about you know, the community and much more besides. So I want to start off by introducing probably the better half of Brewington Hargreaves, Jonathan Brewington, um, who's actually lived in Windsor for a number of years and probably does more business here than anyone else. So let's get into it. Start with the size and compare you know, how that lays out, population and kind of just area. Uh, Windsor encompasses seven square miles of town limits. Um, but it actually expands out to 56 miles uh, when you include the county area that still would have a Windsor address. And in terms of population, there's 26,000 residents in Windsor. Yeah. So yeah, Healdsburg City is like four and a half square miles and the greater Healdsburg area is 184 square miles. So you know, just that little bit bigger. Um, but Healdsburg as a city, I think the population's um, about 11,000. So yeah, definitely a little bit smaller than Windsor. Yeah, so let's talk about, I know, one of the things which certainly I've experienced having you know, moved to Healdsburg is just the real sense of community within Healdsburg. So I sort of feel as though Windsor <laughs> has, has a similar, similar feel and you know, got lots of community events happening within the town. Yeah, of course, I'm also partial and I would argue that Windsor has an equally great sense of community, I feel. Um, and there are a lot of events. I think Windsor, maybe one of the big differences is it's a little bit more family-centric, kid-centric. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of the events, um, in addition to uh, our Thursday night markets in the summer at Windsor, uh, they also have Tuesday night movie nights, um, which is kind of a family friend, family friendly movie night um, for kids and families to enjoy alike. They set it up right on the town square, um, which is called the Windsor Town Green, and it's just a great place to gather. They have food vendors and all of those types of things too. So is that similar to the sort of Tuesday nights on the square that we have within Hillsburg? Very similar. Yeah. They have the live music. Uh, this is Thursday nights, excuse me. But they have the live music, food vendors, um, and just a great atmosphere to hang out, um, walk around, have a drink. Um, it's all open air. So, it, you know, it was a really big hit during COVID as well um, because they could reopen sooner because it was all outdoors. And Windsor, I know obviously Hillsburg has its farmer's market on a Tuesday, so lunchtime, and then also a Saturday. And Windsor, Windsor also has a, a farmer's market? Right, so Windsor has their farmer's market Sunday mornings. Um, they also take place right in the town green, um, which is kind of the center and the core of town in Windsor, similar to the Hillsburg Square, um, but kind of a great gathering place. Uh, you don't have a Farmers of America parade, do you? We don't have a Farmers of America parade. Um, and I know this is another hotly debated one, but right around the same time in 4th of July, um, Windsor has a pretty big festival. Um, it's called Kaboom. They host it at Kaiser Park, which is right near the high school in Windsor. Um, they set them off actually from the high school field. But Kaboom is a festival in and of itself. It's not just there to watch the fireworks, um, but we have live music, food vendors, and just a great atmosphere for people to come hang out. So yeah, so and it feels like both you know both Windsor and Healdsburg definitely have their fair share of you know community events. It's probably it's probably a draw when it comes to comes to events. We'll call it a draw. Call it a draw. So next up, let's talk about yeah, let's talk a little, little bit about schools. Yeah. yeah so schools are inter an interesting topic and obviously a very important topic for those with kids. Uh, Windsor is a much larger population, so its schools are larger. Uh, Windsor has grown quite a bit, predominantly due to the increase in families that want to live in Windsor. So in Windsor, there are actually limited private school options. There is a Windsor Christian School um, that just goes up to 8th grade. Additionally, there are several elementary schools scattered throughout Windsor um, that feed into a bigger middle school and Windsor High School. Um, but one interesting thing that Windsor offers is Cali Calmeca, which is the language immersion school in Windsor as well. So that offers the opportunity for kids to learn both Spanish and English in elementary school, um, which has become a really popular alternative for people um, in Windsor or even surrounding areas that want their children to have the opportunity mm -hmm. to learn another language. And then Hill Hillsburg, you know, it's similar range of schools in that sense. Yeah, yeah. Hillsburg's a little different. They actually have a, a few additional private school options. They have St. John's, which is the Catholic elementary school. Um, and then they also have the Hillsburg School, which is a not a non-religious based private school um, in Hillsburg as well that and then of course their public school options a couple elementary schools feeding into the middle school and high school as well so probably probably a draw again would you say I'll give you a yeah. call it another draw okay so now now definitely a contentious topic like grocery stores so obviously Hillsburg has Big John's um, and then Windsor has Oliver's so yeah which 
Which, which do you feel, Big John's or Oliver's? I would claim this one's not a draw. I think Oliver's is, it's a much larger grocery store. Um, Oliver's is a, I don't want to call it a chain, but there are multiple locations in Sonoma County, but Windsor is their newest location. Um, in my opinion, their best. It, they offer a variety of products from, uh, you know, your basic necessities all the way up to your gourmet foods um, in a really comfortable, easy to access place. Um, and they also, be warned that they do offer Wednesdays, um, senior discounts on Wednesdays, and that can get quite crowded on Wednesday afternoon. And in fact, I think Healdsburg offers a senior discount day, I think it might be Tuesday actually. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so, so same thing. If, if you don't get that discount, it's worth <laughs> With staying clear, staying clear on those days. And, and in addition, there are other options in both locations. Um, you're not, you know, relegated to just the local grocery store. Um, both towns have a Safeway. Windsor also has a Rayleigh's as well. Yeah, and and I, you know, also Big John's is my local grocery store. But I must confess, I I probably would vote in favour of uh, going to Oliver's where, wherever possible. But um, Big Big John's is a, you know, you can pretty much get everything there. Um, I do feel as though the fish, the fish counter at all of this is, is exceptional. I think the hot counter is probably better. Yeah. Um, and it's probably got a better beer selection as well. So there you go. <laughs> so definitely Oliver checks that, checks the box and probably wins on that one. So let's talk, you know, just on the, on the subject of, of shopping. Um, what about big box stores? That's definitely an area where Hillsburg doesn't really have that much to offer. Yeah. Sure. And, and that can be a pro or con, yeah. depending on how you look at it and your proximity to it. Um, but it's nice to know that Windsor, at least on the one edge of town, does have some big box retailers, um, which I just view as a convenience. It's nice to be able to run to Home Depot or get you know basic necessities at a Walmart or those kinds of shops, um, just in case you need to, or you're not driving you know 20 minutes all the way to Santa Rosa necessarily. And I think that's definitely something that maybe I hadn't appreciated you know, before I moved here is... You know, just, just how close, you know, places like the, the Home Depot in Windsor is or, or even going to Costco in Santa Rosa. I mean, it's, it's really not very far away at all. I think sometimes you sort of, you know, you operate in the sort of very small radius around Healdsburg if you live here. But actually, you know, 20 minutes, you're in, you can get to most, most big box stores. Yeah, and it's important to have access to those because both communities, Windsor and Healdsburg, very much support small business. Um, and they don't want all just big box chain retailers. So let's talk about um, house prices. It'd be rude to do this without talking about ha house prices. So I think the median house price in Hillsburg is currently you know, just under a million dollars, 975,000. Um, what, what about um, Windsor? Yeah, Windsor is dramatically less. Um, the median price stands actually 28% lower, right around 764 currently um, is the median price point in Windsor. So obviously still R relatively expensive as to other parts of the country, but as far as Sonoma County goes, you know, relatively affordable and actually sometimes slightly below the median. So maybe, maybe we're talking a little bit about, okay, if, if, if the median price is, you know, 760, you know, what are your options in, in that sort of median price point? Yeah, it, Windsor's an interesting community where there's actually a relatively small amount of low end or lower end options below that median, but also an equally small amount above that median. Um, it's a pretty tight price range um, where you're going to see, you know, most of the homes in Windsor are going to be between that seven and $900,000 range. Um, an entry level three bedroom, two bath single family home is going to probably start right around seven. But it really, until you get into a few select areas, you're going to be pretty much capped out around a million mm -hmm. um, as a price point in Windsor. Like I said, excluding a few of the higher end neighborhoods. That, that's a really good point that, that, you know, that definitely is a sort of a a tighter sort of distribution within Windsor, whereas obviously in Hillsburg, you know, you've obviously got the, the you know, the lower end price points, you know, probably down to, you know, 700-ish, but then you can go all the way up to, I don't know, 10 million plus and, and, and more in, once you get out into sort of, you know, Dry Creek and, and even some of the homes in town now are sort of pushing, pushing 5 million. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit more about the, the different types of homes. So, Let's start off talking maybe about you know what, what are the what are the options for families in Windsor? Yeah, and Windsor is really good with family homes, and that's part of the reason that demographic has shifted that way. There's a lot of neighborhoods in Windsor, even if you take from we call it the girl streets. Um, anecdotally, near the Safeway Shopping Center, it's Jane Drive, Jessica. Gertrude, a lot of streets like that, that's a more entry level neighborhood, um, but great for families, good floor plans, three bedroom to four bedroom plans. 
Um, you have the east side of town is kind of another pocket, and we'd call that either near Foothill Park or just simply east of Hembury. Um, that's another great area where families really want to be. Having that close proximity to Foothill Regional Park is really great for people that you know like outdoor activities and hiking and such as well. And then on the west side of the town is also interesting because there's some of the newer communities on the west side of town um, that are quite popular, like Vintage Greens and Ventana. Ventana is right by the high school and is a great family neighborhood, um, or really great for all, you know, all demographics, but it particularly attracts families with their large park right in the middle of the neighborhood, um, and just a lot of kids in the streets playing, um, and friends to make for, you know, your kids and uh, other options as well. Those are some of the main key family neighborhoods. Yeah, and if you think about the family neighborhoods within Healdsburg, then, you know, obviously the, the one that obviously jumps probably first to mind is up in Parkman Farms. Um, and then, you know, you've definitely got other sort of, you know, bigger family homes in that area as well, with places like Clear Ridge. But then I'd say, you know, a large part of what I would describe as the Midtown, so sort of uh, north of Powell, um, but sort of south of March in, in that area, there's a lot of, you know, family family homes in there, but, you know, more affordable price points. And I guess, the you know, the one thing I would say is, you know, it's getting hard now to for families to afford places in, in sort of downtown um, Hillsburg in the main central area because, you know, just because of the price points of, of those these days. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about the, you know, entry level, but the sort of, um, I know, seven, eight hundred level. Yeah, in Windsor, there's, you could find there's not a lot of condo complexes or those types of housing units. Um, there is one larger development called Courtyard East. Um, it's two bedroom, two bath plans, and those are around 400,000. Um, so a real entry level, you know, product for Windsor, so to speak. And then beyond that, you kind of get into the, some of those neighborhoods I just touched on, um, where you can get the three bedroom, two bath plans that maybe range from 1,200 to 1,500 square feet um, in that low, you know, seven to 800 range pretty comfortably. And in some neighborhoods in Windsor, it's even possible to get a four bedroom, maybe up to 800. Um, in some of those neighborhoods, maybe if it hasn't had quite as few, many updates. Um, so yeah, let's talk, talking about you know, condos in Healdsburg, then we've got some condos down by the river, um, and then you've also got you know, condos on North Street. If we're talking about single family homes, then at the sort of, you know, they're definitely more expensive than Windsor, sort of in that midtown area. You know, probably you know eight eight hundred thousand. Um, you know, generally is where you you would be looking. So you know, I think just as you would expect, Windsor on balance is definitely more more options at those lower price points. So let's talk now a little bit about you know what are the the high end housing, and let's you know talk about you know in the in the town of Windsor and the the city of Hillsborough to start with. Yeah, absolutely. So in the town of Windsor, um, there's a few higher end developments. And obviously there's always one-offs. There's unique lots in every neighborhood that could command a premium. But in general, I would say some of the premier neighborhoods in Windsor um, would be areas off of Vinecrest, which is also near Foothill Park, but the lots get a little bigger. They're more like a quarter to a half acre and the homes get a little larger. And in these areas, you might be looking more in that million to million and a half price point. Um, another community is called Ellsbury. Again, you see a common theme, but is near Foothill Park um, in the town of Windsor. And the price points in there are maybe you know, 900 to 1.2, um, with some pretty large floor plans. They can get up to 3,200 square feet in that neighborhood, but the lot sizes are still smaller in there. But the two, I would say, real premium communities in Windsor inside town limits are the two gated communities. One being Lakewood Hills, which I have quite a bit of familiarity with um, and have had Great success selling a lot of homes in there, and we've even done some renovation projects in there. Um, but Lakewood Hills is a unique setting because it's right in the heart of town. You actually drive through past grocery stores just to get into it, but it's actually a gated community. So once you go through this gate, you feel like you're in another world. Uh, it takes you back to an era where they built subdivisions a little differently. You come in, it's all tree-lined streets, and the entire community is focused around two central lakes. Um, and you have homes that surround the lake and actually back up to it. But then you also have homes down all the cul-de-sac side streets in this neighborhood. Um, it's fully insulated, and, but the lot sizes are, you know, a quarter to half an acre lots in there with just beautiful settings, lots of privacy. And the price point in here is also more, probably a million to a million and a half. Um, we've seen a few homes backing up to the lake, obviously with that water view, which is very attractive, get a little higher than one and a half million. The other premier community in Windsor is Oak Hill Estates. It's right on the north edge of town, and it was developed for custom homes specifically. 
to gated community with half acre to up to three acre lots. And the homes in here are quite large, not like anything else you really see in Windsor. Because even compared to Lakewood Hills, where the average house size is maybe 2,000 square feet, the average house size in Oak Hill is probably going to be 4,000 plus square feet. You have homes all the way up to 10,000 square feet, um, one with an indoor swimming pool in Oak Hill. So the price points in there vary pretty dramatically because there's a big size difference, but bare minimum, you're going to be looking at $2 million to get into that neighborhood, probably up to four or five. And if we're talking about Hillsburg, you know, thinking about the sort of high end within town, then, you know, obviously within the downtown area, um, you know, your, your classic sort of 15 minute walk to the plaza is, you know, obviously some of the, the high end homes. But then you also do have places, you know, a, sort of maybe a mile out of town, like places like Hidden Acres, up towards, you know, uh, Revel on, on the sort of north side of, of Fitch Mountain. Um, so, and then you've got places that, you know, I suppose they are sort of downtown, like on Grove Street, um, you've got some, you know, big, big homes there. So there's definitely, you know, the, the concentration of the higher end homes tend to be more in the sort of the downtown area. Okay, so let's talk about rural homes, you know, starting in, in Hillsburg first. Then, you know, the place that most people think about is, you know, the classic sort of Dry Creek Valley, um, wine country estate. But then you've got places in Alexander Valley, you know, Chalk Hill Road, probably a little, little bit cheaper. And if we're thinking about price points, then it's pretty hard to get anything for less than one and a half million dollars as a you know, rural place in Healdsburg now. And, you know, the, the prices vary, you know, all the way up to, I know one sold recently, a new build for seven million dollars. We've got Weber Ranch, which is currently for sale out in the Chalk Hill Road area. Um, that's like near ten million dollars. So you can, you know, you can really spend anything from you know one and a half to to ten plus. Yeah, and as we referenced, Windsor is a little more affordable. Um, their predominantly rural areas would be off Star Road and the west side of town is kind of what most people think of as rural Windsor. Um, but it is not cheap by any means. There, there's probably a wider discrepancy. Price points maybe start closer to a million out there um, for a nice livable home. You know on some acreage, obviously we're talking rural here. Um, all the way up to, I've seen a couple years ago, there were two homes kind of back to back, it was interesting for Windsor, that sold on Star Road, um, both pushing eight million. Um, so there is still a high ceiling out there in Windsor as well. Um, and that kind of morphs into an area that is kind of in between Healdsburg, Windsor, and even the river areas on West Side and East Side Road, which is also rural. And uh, one, one area we should talk about, I mean, it's, I guess it's technically Santa Rosa, uh, but, you know, it's, it's pretty near both Healdsburg and Windsor is, is, is Shiloh. Yeah, Shiloh is an interesting community. It, it's a Santa Rosa address, but it is actually serviced by Windsor Water. Um, so if that gives you any perspective of how close it really is to Windsor, um, that's a good you know, barometer there is that they're tied into the Windsor Water system. And that in and of itself is unique because what Shiloh offers is a gated community of rural homes. The lot sizes in Shiloh are three to 50 acres. Um, and in that, you have very large estate homes, but with immense amount of privacy and such close proximity to town. It's just outside of Shiloh Road, which is a main through, through street in Windsor. Um, and you go into the gated community, into the hills um, to get complete privacy just five minutes from town. Um, price points in Shiloh tend to range anywhere from about 3 million up to about 10 million. Uh, which is, again, a unique opportunity to be that close to town and experience kind of the rural living we're talking about, but without, you know, the 20, 30 minute drive that's sometimes associated with it. Yeah, it's, that's often an area that, you know, for people who are looking for a rural place in, in Hillsburg, and, and a lot of people won't naturally think of somewhere like Shiloh, and it's, it's definitely an area which, you know, if, if people are coming up from, you know, San Francisco, want the rural living, it feels like Shiloh is a little bit more, a little bit more sort of curated rural living, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and it's definitely a good option for, for people who are looking for that, you know, wine country experience, um, but, you know, with the security and amenities of somewhere like Shiloh. Yeah, and it's interesting because some people are a little intimidated by what a well and septic mean when you're li in country living. Um, and while Shiloh does have septic systems, they are on city water. Um, so you don't ever have to worry about a well. That could be a pro or con, depending on how you look at it. Um, but it definitely takes a burden, you know, away from you. And if you do want to learn more about Shiloh, then we do have a video on going to talk about Shiloh, as well as Lakewood Hills, which Jonathan was talking a minute ago. So do check out in the description for below for, for links to those those videos. So finally, let's talk about um, the 55 plus. I mean, obviously Jonathan's a little way off being 55, <laughs> but I might qualify quite soon. So. 
Um, in Healdsburg, we've got the Rivers Bend community, and that's definitely, I, I still think it's some of the best value real estate in Healdsburg. I mean, prices there start, I, mean, I would used to say maybe five something, but it, it tends to be more six something, up to sort of 800, you know, 850 for the, for the highest end one. So that's if you are, you know, 55, it's a mile from Healdsburg Plaza. So, you know, to buy something that's in either a two bed or a three bed, for less than a million dollars, mile to the plaza is definitely something uh, an area worth looking at. I would, I would concede that Hillsburg does have some good 55 plus options in a good area and good setting. Windsor does have a 55 plus community called Brooks Creek. It's right actually in the heart of town near the Safeway Shopping Center, which is nice because it's near grocery stores, banks, um, some medical buildings as well. Um, but it's a small community. It, the price range is probably from 400 to about 600 thousand, maybe a little more, um, because there are not very many three bedroom homes in this community, which could be a downside if you need a little more space, but mm -hmm. want to be in a 55 plus community. But on the flip side, there are actually one bedroom plans, um, which is how you get to that kind of 400, 450 price point in there. Okay, so that's, you know, really co covering the different, you know, housing options. And as I said, then we've got lots of other videos talking about some of these different areas, including 55 plus. So do check those out um, if you want to know more about those. So let's talk about restaurants. Let's start off with Healdsburg. Obviously, everyone knows Healdsburg for its Michelin star restaurants with places like Single Thread and Barn Diva. So yeah, what's, what's Windsor got to offer when it comes to restaurants? I know, David, you, you have to rub in that Windsor does not unfortunately have any Michelin star restaurants, um, but it does have some of the best, I think, fast casual or more casual type restaurants, um, particularly of maybe ethnic foods and those kinds of things. We have great taquerias. Uh, my personal favorite is the Himalayan restaurant, which I think is which a unique, very good. Yeah. A, a unique, you know, opportunity to have right in the downtown. We've also got some of the best Thai food around. The places like Tommy Thai, our sushi restaurant Ume is considered quite good um, and is a popular favorite among locals. Um, so while we don't have the Michelin star restaurants or the five star restaurants at that price point, um, we do have a lot of great options. We also have some elevated restaurants like Grotta and Sweet Teas as well, offering both kind of elevated um, Southern comfort food and also Italian food. Um, Grotta is interesting because I don't think a lot of people realize the Grotta is actually owned by a previous Stark chef. Um, the branch out on his own to open grotto. So. so I definitely can see that Windsor's definitely got the best fast casual restaurants. It's certainly something that's missing with uh, in Healdsburg. And I, you know, personally love like Tommy Thai. And the one thing I would say is that Healdsburg does now have its own Indian restaurant called Bollywood Kitchen. So if you haven't been there, check that out. But I would also say the Himalayan in, in Windsor is also like a really, really good Indian restaurant. And that's coming from a Brit who's, you know, na our national dish is curry after all. But it wouldn't be fair to downplay just the, all the options Healdsburg does have for the high end. It's pretty rare that a community this size would have the number of Michelin star restaurants that Healdsburg does have. I definitely agree. And, and Healdsburg does have, you know, a lot of, you know, other more casual restaurants. Um, so a lot of people loved Campofina, but unfortunately that closed down. But that's actually going to be reopening um, under new management with uh, Troubadour having taken that over, who are the people who also set up the bakery, um, Quail and Condor. So yeah, there's definitely lots of options. Um, but I, I do think Windsor's, if you live in Healdsburg, has got just some great options for, um, you know, the Thai, the curry that we talked about. So let's talk a little bit about bars. So in, in Healdsburg, there's a number of different options. You obviously got Dukes in the plaza. We've got Elephant in the Room, you know, as, as casual bars. Then there's also a new place that's opened up by Fogbelt Brewing down by the railroad, which is definitely a place worth checking out. Um, but yeah, what's, what's Windsor got when it comes to sort of bars? Yeah, the kind of the down-home bar in Windsor would be the Publican. Uh, it's been around for quite some time. It, it's right in the downtown of Windsor. Some of the newer additions are a flagship brewery that took over a different spot in downtown. And then also Barrow Brothers is opening a new location right near their Oliver Shopping Center that we had touched on earlier. Um, but Windsor's real claim to fame is going to be that Windsor actually does have Russian River Breweries, uh, major headquarters and factory there, um, right on the outskirts of town, which is obviously a, you know, a well-renowned and, and beloved beer. So Next up, let's talk very briefly about the outdoors. So I'm also, I, I love the outdoors, you love the outdoors. You, within Healdsburg, then the hiking options are probably Lake Sonoma. It's, there's definitely I know, 40 plus miles of trails there if you love hiking or mountain biking. You've obviously got the lake, um, so you can rent a boat and go out on the lake and you could even go camping around the lake as well. So what are the options within Windsor for sort of, you know, having outdoors on your doorstep? 
Yeah, Foothill Regional Park, which I touched on several times during our community section, uh, is a really popular hiking destination. It's very accessible um, with trails that could go anywhere from a half mile to a three mile loop. Um, and you can zigzag, obviously, to create additional length there. But it, it's a very accessible location with great views, great hiking, well-maintained. It's just a great place to take the family, the dogs. It's horse-friendly, dog-friendly, all the above. It's a great option for everybody. So we started off talking about community and you know, living somewhere is all about the people. So let's talk a little bit about you know people who live here. I think one of the things which Hillsburg definitely get criticism of and particularly maybe more in more recent years is the number of people who you know buy second homes here. You know of course within the downtown area there definitely are you know quite a few second homes. You know that being said there are plenty of you know families in you know the midtown area, you've got Parkland Farms we've talked about. So, you know, let's talk a little bit about, you know, Windsor and what's the sort of characteristic of people who live in, in Windsor. Yeah, Windsor obviously is great for all demographics, but it is predominantly made up of families and retirees, are the two big profiles in Windsor. Um, it is, as you mentioned, it, a predominantly a owner-occupied or primary residence uh, location, right? Everybody that owns a home in Windsor, for the most part, lives there. That's not to say there's not second mm -hmm. homes or that there's not even great vacation rentals in Windsor. Um, but it is largely going to be local families and, you know, local retirees. And that's true of Hillsburg as well. There's definitely, you know, a lot of people who move here with their children, you know, having left home and moving here to sort of settle down and, and retire. So you definitely get, you know, get that here as well. So that rounds up our sort of Windsor versus Hillsburg. If you are looking for something in Hillsburg, but maybe can't find what you're looking for, then you know, definitely consider Windsor. So if you want to do get in touch on 707-238-2112 or, or email either Jonathan at BrewingtonHargreaves.com or myself, David at BrewingtonHargreaves.com and we'll hopefully be able to answer your questions. If you like this video, do hit like and subscribe to get other videos like this. Until the next time, go well.